get on the video. In this trek, we talked about equity and we're joined by Willis Johnson, who is the Vice President of Partnerships and Programs at Bridge Alliance. We talked about questions like, what is hindering us from achieving equity? And are we having the right questions surrounding equity? And this was such an informative conversation and Willis is an amazing person. So I know you're going to love the trek. So without further ado, enjoy the video. Hello everyone and welcome to The Trek. The Trek is a Civics Unplugged series where community members participate in meaningful discussions on topics that are too often neglected when thinking about building the future. Through prompting questions and provocations, we venture together into complex but important conversations related to building the future and democracy. We understand that this work requires ongoing dialogue, but it's a journey worth trekking through. I'm Madison, I'm a high school senior from Verdigris, Oklahoma, joined by some of our community members and a special guest, which we'll hear from in just a moment. And today we're talking about equity. We always start off with a word association. So when you see your name on the screen, introduce yourself and say the one of three words you associate with the topic and why. Cool, so I can hop in. Hi everyone, my name is Zoe. I'm a high school senior in Charlottesville, Virginia. And my word association is going to be a little weird, but I will explain it. Um, it's just that analogies are important. Um, there are a lot of kind of pictures that float around that try to depict what equity is and you have to be very careful about which ones you use because some of them um, portray a very specific narrative that those that need more support are lesser than and so that's something that I've had to dive into and correct a lot of people on how we use the right images um, to show equity. Um, I'm Rose. I'm a junior um, in Columbus, Ohio. And I, what comes to mind to me is justice um, when thinking about equity um, and making like, society that works um, for everyone. Okay, I'll go next. Hello, everybody. I'm from, I'm calling from India. My name is Namishka and I'm a sophomore. Now, maybe I'm too money-minded to think, but think like this, but the only thing in my head is capitalism and um, the stock market. <laughs> um, so hi, I'm Gauri, I'm a sophomore. I too am from India. The two words that I'd like to associate with uh, equity are first of all, acceptance. Because only when we are accepting of other people's and other communities' conditions, which differ from ours, can we really practice uh, and preach equity and also equality. Because when we practice equity, it can surely lead up to equality. But that's about it. Um, so, hi, I'm Alina. Um, I'm calling you from Basel, Switzerland. I'm a senior in high school. And the two words that I'd probably use, um, or I guess the one word I'd use is impartiality. Because to be equity, um, equitable, it means you're being fair and impartial um, and open-minded. Well, um, I'm F. Willis Johnson. Uh, I've, I've been, a senior in high school before and in college and some other places, but actually I'm, I'm vice president of, um, of partnerships and programs for an organization called Bridge Alliance that works in the uh, democratic uh, space and field. And I, I do all things around um, uh, being diverse and equitable and inclusive and, and opportunistic for all. Uh, when I think about equity, it's, it, there's words like um, all, um, uh, currency come to mind and um, and uh, um, uh, uh, responsibility, strangely enough. Hey, um, so I'm Gary. I'm calling in from New York City, one of the co-founders of CU. Um, I know, you know, equity has multiple meanings, uh, but I think that both of the meanings relate to this word association of key to wealth. Uh, if we don't think about equity in both senses of the word, um, 
And I think, you know, people are just living paycheck to paycheck. There's no way that you build generational wealth. And I would say like for me, it would probably have to be conscious and subconscious that comes to mind because I think we need to be equitable consciously, obviously, but also ensure that subconsciously uh, we are as well. Um, but thank you all for sharing those. Now we can go ahead and hop into the conversation. So does anyone have a question or provocation to get us started off with? Does anybody want to go ahead? Go ahead. Can I... Sorry? Go for it. Okay. So the classic one, what's the difference between equi equality and equity? Mm. Maybe sorry, I like... sorry, I didn't catch that. What was your question? No, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm the question is what's the difference between equality and equi equity? I guess I can give the very, very basic answer. I'm sure some of you will have better answers than this. It's just that um, equality is giving everyone the same thing and the idea that like everybody has the same opportunity. Um, but I think equity acknowledges the nuance in just like the various forms of oppression that people are experiencing, the different places that people are in their life. Um, and that we have to do more for people who need more and that equality is not always the fair, like the fairest way to attack something. I think my, my mom has a saying that you can, you can open all the doors, but not everyone will walk through them. And so that's kind of the difference between equality, which is we open the doors, but equity, how do we actually get everybody um, to access those opportunities? I feel like um, building up with what Zoe said, um, I feel like equality makes it sound like we have to do the same thing for each person because everyone needs the same thing. And that's like what's equal and just for everyone. But with equity, it's like we need to meet everyone's needs and they might be different needs. Um, I'd actually like to, if I may, pose a question to um, based on what Zoe said. Um, I think in today's society, particularly in the US, um, we, we, I think we all understand that um, we all need to, that for example, groups like Black Lives Matter um, are working to achieve um, equity. However, we've, we've established that we need to create an equal narrative um, but what's hindering us from pushing that one step forward from equality to equity? And how can, how can we, how can we make that step more climbable? Hmm. That's interesting. Who's going to ask that to me? Um, I personally think that what's hindering us is like ideas like of that are based in like the American dream, like bootstrap theory and things like that. And they're really based on the idea that everyone is equal, which everyone is like equally um, like valuable in the world. But the idea that everyone has like the basis to be able to do the same thing. And so everyone should just do that um, and can do that. So um, that's what I think is keeping us from equity. Mm. I think for me, uh, we just have this perception that we just look at one sect when, when we talk about equality and equity and we think that everybody's got the same platform and the same opportunities, but we don't acknowledge that, acknowledge the, the fact that different individuals and different communities across the world live in different socioeconomic conditions and that we need to be focused on providing them like the particular resources they need to get to the level uh, the ones that already are yeah um i just have an i mean i have an opinion that i want to share but this probably wouldn't uh, you know answer the question 
but I think Willis would be able to solve this for me. Um, I don't think equity is necessary. I mean, I if you if you look at it that way, we could perhaps, from a very theoretical perspective, we could perhaps look at putting everybody on the same platform first, and then raising the platform. We don't have to give separate platforms to every individual or every community. Thereby, we can, instead of doing that, we can make everybody equal in our society. We can have no social hierarchies. We can um, keep everything equal and norm, I mean, at the same level. And then perhaps um, give everybody an equal chance to succeed. Because, um, I, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but um, there are things called reservations which are given to socially backward minority classes. Um, mostly they're given to castes. I mean, in India, we have this caste system and the lowest caste was the worst affected and um, people still argue they are still affected, like currently. I mean, I have no problem with with you know the reservations but lit i mean not gonna lie the reservations occupy more i mean more more than 40 percent of university uh, applications job applications and government um work spaces and a lot of times no the people who are not from this quota find it very difficult to kind of um, you know, get a job or get a seat in the university. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but this is something that I just thought about and it made sense to me. Yeah. I think you you raise a really good point. Oh, sorry, Willis, you can go ahead. Oh. I'll, say you raise, I'll say you raise a good point that I think we, we can overcorrect for equity. I think one of the greatest examples that may be happening in the Western world right now um, is that this, the city of Paris in France was fine because they had too many women in public office. Like the ratio, like they had some rule that like you couldn't have more than this percentage of a gender, you know, trying to target the fact that we have an overrepresentation of men in government. But when it was flipped with women, they were fined, right? And like, well, that's actually, you know, kind of a good thing that we're seeing this overrepresentation of a group that's historically been underrepresented. Um, they were fined by the government, like the French government fined Paris for having too many women female representatives. Um, and I think further to build um, on your point too is that, um, what was I gonna, like how do we, like making equity, I guess, ex like acceptable and like what's the next next step is being able to totally get rid of those systems of oppression altogether. It's like that whole concept of like liberation where like we don't even need equity because everyone does have equal footing. There is no system. Um, but I think that in many ways, like we, we need some kind of equitable balancing of the scales in the interim, um, just because we can't, we can't jump all the way to dissolving the systems that are causing those inequalities to begin with. Um, this has actually stemmed um, another, I guess, a follow up question that I had is, is our road to, um, to equity Will that come if we change our definition of equality and what equality is perceived as? Because I know, um, I know, I, um, I don't remember who it was. I'm sorry, but um, they were saying something along the lines of, to I guess to reach equity, we need to understand that even though people. I guess should be equal, the basic needs. Um, there are some people that can meet their basic needs better than others. Hmm. Well, I, first of all, I, I just wanna say I am, I, I just, I need to figure something out. I'm like totally ill-equipped. Uh, to be in this circle on today because you guys are first of all I didn't know it was going to be so internationally uh popular oh and obviously I don't know how to keep my computer on the stand but no seriously 
um, thank you for 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 your your genius in all of this. I, you've made me think about this in a way that I've I've not, and I call myself, you know, someone who who kind of thinks they know something about this. Um, I would I would say to all of these questions and some of the things that have been lifted, um, it's it's interesting that um, this is not looked at with with the value proposition. Now I know that was a big 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 kind of bubble that comes up, but this this idea of maybe equality leading to equity is, is, is one that's interesting. Um, uh, or that trying to make things balanced is what is really causing the imbalance. But I wanna, I, I would maybe push a little bit to all of that to just maybe think about if you have it as a, as a when you look at it from a value proposition, is it possible for all of us? And I'm sure all of you are much better in math than I was at, at your stage. Uh, but um, in, our, in our respective spaces, we have some form of culinary delight like a pie. I'm sure in our cultural expressions across the board here, um, we have some type of thing that looks like a, what a pie or, or think about your favorite dish uh, of, of whatever you like. Is it, is it, to a certain extent, I bet if it's like two of you, you could probably divide that evenly and share it and have great joy and be, be real comfortable with the amount and the experience and the calculation that came about to make it shareable, right? But when you add a few more folk, and particularly if you add some folk who have some of the nuances that you highlighted, um, maybe in our culture, pizza is a big thing. So uh, in my house, uh, I've got a pestitarian, uh, a carnivore, and then just you know, a, a, a teenager that eats like a two-year-old. And so trying to trying to balance out a pizza and make sure there's enough slices equally for everybody, <laughs> or or a pie, is really hard. And so this idea of equity may not be as simple if it is simply about, you know, sharing everything. But, I mean, excuse me, equality, if it's about sharing everything, will, in my opinion, will we'll probably not always be able to have, make sure that everybody has the same amount in the same way um, or even want the same thing. But equity, equity in this idea of, everybody gets to have some and have some of not only what is offered or just offered, but even have some say in who gets in what, how do we get to order the pizza or, 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 or has some say and some opportunity to have some of what it is that everyone gets to partake. And maybe we just don't have, you know, more than just one option around the possibilities of our favorite culinary offering. So that probably was a long way uh, away from where everybody uh, <laughs> is going with this, but um, I know I, I struggle less with trying to figure out if everyone can, can, can have the same or the, in amount, in proportion, in volume, but what does it mean when we know that everyone does not have even an opportunity or or the possibilities of even having some. And that's not just in material things, it's in the immaterial things. It's not just in the, 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 the large things, but even in the small things is kind of the, the framing for balancing equity and equality in, in my world. I feel like um, the analogy with like the pie brings up like the idea, which I also think like is hindering e equity, which is like, um, like scarcity mindset and stuff like that and like because people with privilege feel like if there is more equity in the society then they'll get something taken away from them and if there's like not enough success to go around or not enough like um um like opportunities to go around and I think like the idea is like we we have to even like go beyond the pie like there's there's a pie for everyone you know um, like, 
there's not something that we need to take away like it doesn't in the end like there is enough for everyone and we don't have to like it's not taking away from someone to have someone else be have what they need also and we equate our strength or our value in what we what we consume or what we hold or what we have um there's a whole movement afoot around not only, I mean, this has happened historically across the globe. There's been a movement of luxurious and, you know, wealth and abundance or accumulation. And at least uh, in our, in some expressions of, the, of Western culture, there's this whole idea of minimalism um, or, you know, this idea of, um, of maybe not only our practices defined or our behaviors, which is our culture, but you know, maybe even re-changing the narrative or redefining, you have the, you have the luxury to do that. Um, I was trying to look at something here. I'm gonna be quiet now, but I was trying to look at the etymology of, uh, I love words and word pictures. And so I was trying to look up like, what's the origin of equity? Like, what does it really, really mean? Um, I'm gonna go find it and I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, so like uh, adding up to, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so adding up to what Willis said, uh, one thing that we should note of uh, is here that let's say there are two people, one has had two pizzas before having the pie and the other one is hungry. So it would make sense for the pie to be divided in quarters and the hungry one to receive, let's say, three fourths of the pie, and the ones who who's already eaten to receive one fourth of the pie. So we are catering differently to the particular needs of different people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Gauri, I like that analogy, but um, how about we give the hungry guy a pizza too, but then equally share the pie? You know, this is going very tangential, but that's that's what I wanted to say. Okay, so um, this is another idea. Um, so we have the ruling party of India currently has in, in its social, in its mandate states that its main cause, its its main job is to maintain social, oh God, why don't I remember this? One second. It's to maintain social uniformity i think that's that's what it is so it's it's the jargon aside it's just maintaining a social uniform code and conduct for the, for the entire nation so um, this may come as not as weird but no burkhas no 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 other religious goods on yourself nothing no you cannot wear anything or show anything that you know shows your re religion or your what god you believe in or what anything so i i mean i'm not a big fan of this analogy but i i get where it comes from because i understand it and i don't see why it is an issue i mean if the minorities if if the majority of in a community don't get to um, per se don't get to show their religion around and don't get to preach their religion i don't see a reason why the minority should in at least in my country our government is too scared to do anything for the minorities i mean they're too scared to raise laws for, for the minority community majorly in india is the muslims and the government is too scared to do anything for the Muslims. They're too scared to raise any laws, talk about them, because they're too scared that everyone's just going to come revolting and collapse, and the government's going to collapse. But I don't see why everyone's so scared of minority communities. And I think the word minority it's, it itself is very degrading. And I feel like equity and equality gets hindered because we don't understand that um, a minority will at one point in time has been a majority in, in this community or in the future will turn out to be a majority.
Mm. I think that all comes back to the whole scarcity mindset that while maybe not everyone is equipped with the data that like, especially in the United States, at least that the people groups will be considered the minority will soon become the majority. Um, I think people can feel it in the, just the, the changes that we've made as a society that we have in many ways have grown more accepting because more people have the rights and ability to speak on their issues, right? That you, that we've just, I think that's, kind of like an exponential level of progress that we've made um, in that sense. Um, but I also say too that, Willis, back to your question of, is it possible um, that you both have a scarcity mindset, but also just how we define success, that in many ways we define success by what we are and we compare that to people who aren't that. Um, that's like, well, at least I'm not this person or I have this and I know this person doesn't have that. So that makes me more successful. Um, and I think uh, uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates had a good quote in his book that I'll, I'll never recite it properly, but like you can't, you can't have a mountain without a valley. And so this idea that you need something to look down upon to feel successful and that equity, equity is directly countering that narrative, that there is enough for everybody to be on the mountain, that no one has to, um, no one has to suffer for your, for your success to be meaningful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting though, it, I, and please forgive me, I'm, I'm, I might be just cause I got, I got generationally seasoned ears and I don't, I don't hear the, the new, the newness of the, I gotta get used to this, the depth of, of you, first of all, you guys is insight and your perspective on this. I, um, I want to, I, I do want to say that, you know, it's just kind of like external to us, like in, in the things and in the systems, but what happens if, if we, you know, turn kind of inward with this, um, in, in my work, one of the things that I, I do that's not intentional necessarily, or I didn't, it's not grounded towards this end, but I think it fits is, you know, I feel like equality is this idea of how do we all become again, things like the same, exact, um, how are we collapsed, uh, absorbed into whatever the ideology or the practice or the, the, the offering or consumption? What happens if, if, if equality is, 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 is viewed or seen or experienced with, with celebrating what is what where there's intersection or or common commonality but 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 most for both most of all like it, celebrating the gift of what's unique that each of us bring that makes what is better makes the collective or makes what we're experiencing better so this is a quick way to to explain it in in my work um when we talk about equity one way to look at equity is okay um we say acknowledge what's not right or what's different around me, not with a value judgment of that's wrong, that it's not right. I mean, well, let me say it like this, not because it's not right, because that's not what I would do. It's just like, what's, what's different from what I experience and, and acknowledge that. Um, what is, then you, we invite people to, to affirm, what is it in a situation, in a circumstance or with other people how do I affirm? For instance, we look at each other and say, how do we affirm the, the humanity in each other? Okay, that because you're a person, you deserve these things. And then, and then lastly, how do we act on this? Like, how do we act if something's not what we think is right or like that might be healthy or whatever positive that we'd like to see and how, what is it that we can do that continues to affirm or bring humanity or bring uniqueness or value in a situation or in a person, how do we then, and then what do we do to make sure we keep doing that or do something different so that it happens um, is kind of, uh, is, is it may be a different way to see how to shift, in, not only shift the narrative, but shift the practices that are challenging us as it relates to equality and equity. Um, and it makes it more individual. So we don't have to wait on system. We don't have to wait on things bigger than us or outside of us 
to to fix it? How do we become particip participants and and uh, examples um, of that change ourselves or of that possibility? Um, I feel like this brings up um, like historically like acknowledging like kind of the myth of American equality um, because the idea is that people who came here or were brought here like after like slavery ended or after um, refugees came here in different waves that um, they everyone was able to be equal and just like act equally in society because of um, like life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness and everything. But really everyone had to like assimilate into this specific like norms that were um, a, like diff not necessarily good for in general or and were different from each group and then groups like lost their own uniqueness or were forced into losing their own uniqueness or stifling it down. So I feel like we have to like acknowledge that history to work to like combat it in the future and work to the equity. Hmm. And I guess to your point, Wills, I think that there is a lot that we as individuals can do to just celebrate the uniqueness of others around us. Um, and a lot of that just lies in listening to other people. Because um, that's, I'll say to kind of piggyback on what Rose was saying, that's a huge part of how we, we just silence other people's histories and identities because we don't want to listen to it because it's different than us. And then that forces people to feel like they have to assimilate and they lose the, they lose that uniqueness that does add so much um, to just the lives of the people around them. And so listening to other people, but also just seeking out those very different narratives, I think is, is a huge part of how we can um, support um, you know, equity and equality, um, because in many ways we don't listen to people. So we have to, we're, we have to kind of overcorrect by listening more to the stories and the narratives that we historically have silenced. And also like more than listening, we also need to learn from their experiences and their cultures and acknowledge it as well. So I think that's one thing that we need to do as well. Um, I don't know if this is related, but I always say this, um, if you do some, if you, if you, if you hurt someone and you do, and you do wrong to someone, always acknowledge it to the person, always tell them, ki, always tell them that, listen, I know I did something wrong to you and I acknowledge it because as human beings, we want that satisfaction of knowing or of the other person knowing that we, that they were wrong and we were right. You know, that that kind of satisfaction that, listen, I know that we had a conversation and you hurt me and I, I didn't like where it was going and it hurt me. And that satisfaction, that kind of that that kind of push is necessary for humans. And I think when you acknowledge cultures, when you talk about cultures or, or when a majority in like and minority acknowledge each other's cultures, they kind of you know give that satisfaction that i'm listening to you and i acknowledge the fact that you exist and i understand you you know mm -hmm. hmm. it's tough. It's tough. okay um i have a question i want to pose um now like I don't know, the difference between like equality and equity, I guess is not as clear in society. So I guess I'll just pose, um, are we having the right conversations about equity like in our society right now? I don't think there's any, you know, 
communicating, conversating, questioning, imagining anew. Nothing wrong with with um, with with having the conversations. Um, um, even the ones that are hard, even the ones that are disturbing or discomforting. I mean, um, particularly in 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 the U.S. Um, we pride ourselves on the fact that we have this open, kind of open source, open space, um, uh, free form, um, you know, societal practice of, of raising, both raising question and critique and commentary. Um, and so I don't, it would be kind of, um, it just, it, <laughs> to, to limit it, um, uh, to limit or to judge on, on it uh, to a point where it lessened or um, kept folk from, from asking or inquiring. I think that would, that probably is some of, some of the challenges we're facing now because we don't, let people be free in <laughs> some of their expression or uh, what we don't have is a grounding. We don't, what, what we don't have is, is the same, is, is an understanding of, or sharedness in sometimes in our understanding or in our defining of things, which um, the unwillingness to, to, um, to acknowledge that and correct that makes also conversation very difficult. But no, do conversate, do explore, do question. I'll say I really loved everything you said, um, Willis. And I'd also add, I guess, if we're having the right conversations, I think, I don't know what the perfect language is, but I do think that many of the ways that we talk about equity can seem very exclusionary to those that we're not targeting. I think that when we like, for example, you're talking about changes we do in school, we say, oh, we're doing this, we're adding this extra support for our black students. So if you're not a black student, you're thinking, I don't get that, um, which is a very reasonable, I think, um, conclusion to come to, um, even though maybe it's not acknowledging the other kinds of supports that are already existing uh, for students who aren't, you know, in that group that needs more. And so I don't, again, I don't know what the right, what the right way to approach it is, but there, there has to be a way to talk about equity in a way where it, it's doing something for everybody by helping, you know, the person that has the least in the situation. I feel like um, that brings up like what I think has been pointed out, like with activism often, it's like a group will have something happen or like will want to draw attention to their issues and will be like, no one cares about this like or or everyone cares about this but not this or you have to do it like this like this and it's or um and it just it, i feel like it comes back to like scarcity mindset more it's like there is enough activism for everybody also and like we can talk about all of it um and like we don't have to like tear down on someone else's activism mm -hmm. to like have our own Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Anyone have anything else to add before we move on to reflection? Cool. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and share a link to the notes in the chat for you all. And while you all are looking at those and thinking about your reflection, I can go ahead and get us started. Um, so when I came into this conversation, I didn't think a lot about the difference between equity and equality, so I really enjoyed exploring that with you all. And I also, it, in like however you define the word, I was thinking about it in terms of like systems and how, just like how, how we change things on a large scale, but I like the question that Willis posed when you were like, how can we change as individuals? It's just so easy for these big questions sometimes to forget about like the role that individuals play. And so I always, I, I really appreciate you like bringing back that perspective. And I like Zoe's answer as well, of just like 
genuinely listening to people. So thank you for that. I can jump in. Um, I will say, um, Gari and Namishka, I think I, I don't know, don't know a lot about the Indian caste system. So I learned a lot, I think, from hearing what you all were saying about, you know, the ways that the government has or has not tried to pursue equity and the ways that that has and hasn't worked. And I just found it very interesting that that is remarkably similar um, to kind of what's happened in the United States. Um, and that perhaps there are things that we have to learn from each other of, you know, how we can, how, how we can support those who do make up that bottom cast in both, in both of our respective societies, um, but also in a way that it's not necessarily stripping things from other people and like how we kind of balance those two, those two ideas at the same time. Just to put it out there, the caste system is banned now and it does not exist in the Indian society, but it really does exist. Like, to be honest, it does exist. But like, if, if you were to open the books, I mean, the constitution and see, okay, yeah, the caste system is banned and discrimination on basis of any caste, creed or gender is banned, but it does happen. Um, I can, I, I'll go ahead with my reflection. To be honest, when I came into this uh, conversation, I was not even looking at it from a social science perspective. I was looking at it from a very capitalistic, you know, kind of business view, because that's, that's what I <laughs> just studied. And um, to be honest, I learned a lot. I really, my, my perspective about this broad broadened quite a lot, and I really like the questions that Willis posed um, about how we can understand and how we can unite, how, how you know, we can acknowledge and unite us and talk about our, in, our differences and acknowledge it. And thank you everyone that, you know, you all kind of helped me with my perspectives. Um, I Feel like I learned, um, I feel like the, the picture thing that Zoe talked about was really interesting because that's also how I learned about equity. And it's so interesting how like sometimes even in the way that we talk about things to combat it or learn about it to, in order to dismantle it, we uphold the very thing that we're trying to like get rid of. Um, and that's, that's like something to think about, I feel like going forward. Yeah, so like I definitely learned about a global perspective on equity and you know how it has shaped societies and how we can really work to create an equitable as well as an equal world and have the right conversations about it and that we should be accepting of other people's opinions and views as well. Right on. Yeah. I too. I I to have to know that this is a shared concern across the globe. We should know this, but to hear it from you. Um, and um, you've challenged me even as something that I work in or work around to, 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 um, to think about it with, with, with some fresh and different perspective. Um, but most of all, I'm, I'm just in, incredibly impressed in so, so want to get to another one of these. Uh, I've got like three other topics I want y'all to help me figure out how to f how to write in my book. And I'm like, this is the best like cheat sheet ever. Yes. Like this is cheat code like for my next thing. So I, I love it, man. I love it. Switzerland, That's India, awesome, man. Yeah, we have dozens of countries in our community. It's amazing. Uh, this is an awesome conversation. Um, I think it's it humbled me in my understanding because I realized I don't really understand it enough. And I don't think that anyone has a template solution for, for how to create a more equitable future. 
which is why, because every, also every country, every community is different. Every, so I think we need to do a lot of dialogue. I think people, I think dialogue is one of the most important things that people can do if they have in good faith, want to increase equity in some kind of way. Um, and I think Trek is a really good metaphor for this because you're, you're getting to a place where you wouldn't have gotten otherwise, like you're walking upwards together. Um, like you're, you're like, help, you're pulling people up, right? And you're not judging people because they're like, they have a, a slightly different conception of equity uh, than you. And I really like what Willis said about, like, we can't just be judging people, oh, this is the wrong type of conversation with equity. Like step one is just to even want to have a, a conversation. Um, another thing that was really thought provoking was at least what I, what I, what, 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 where my mind went when we were talking about the food was not everyone likes pizza. Not, so it like equity, like, and to Zoe's point from the very beginning about metaphors, like yeah. not just about like, it's it, that's way oversimplifying things, right? Oh, everyone gets a tiny slice of this pizza. Okay. Well, what if like, I like, you know, God, I'll make a lasagna, right? And you know, you like General Tao's chicken, right? And I don't know, right? Like it, 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 it's. I think we. I think we can think. I think we can think deeper about how to like. I guess what one thing that we talk about in our community a lot is flourishing, and different people need different things to flourish, right? And I can get just to you know talk about one example. Um, Different people, like science is now showing, you know, thankfully that different types of people actually are harmed by, well, like the same, like one person could be harmed by a particular food and one person could be nourished by a particular food. Yeah. Like I can eat a ton of rice and I'll be fine. Maybe this it's obvious. <laughs> I eat rice too, bro. Rice is universal. It's indigenous. Black folk, brown folk, Asiatic folk, the African folk. Rice is like everywhere, man. So no, no wrong. Everybody who like rice, Belmonte, uh, whatever. Not anyway. I'm sorry, y'all messing. This is recording. I'm, let me act like I got some sense. Go ahead, finish your thought, man. <laughs> but I mean, ultimately, we're not going to find out what other people need if we don't talk to them, and we're not trekking together. So I, thought, I think this is a, I think it's beautiful that we're talking about equity through a vehicle where that is I think is essential to increasing equity. Mm -hmm. Wow, and that was like the first time in the reflection where we've actually like gone down the order of the names too. So that's pretty cool. Not not important though. Um, so Willis, I know this was your first trek, and you've said stuff about like what you thought about the conversation. But what did you think about like the trek in general? Oh man, I, I, this is awesome. I wish I could go to every meeting in Trek because like all my other meetings are more like Shrek. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a wreck. <laughs> it's a, uh, you know, um, and any other kind of words I could come up with rhyming without getting in trouble from the FEC. But nevertheless, yeah, no, I love this. I, I'm, first of all, I'm excited that you would make time because uh, all of you I know are super busy, I'm sure. But and 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 then the difference of time, you know, that that unites you across the globe. But but we need this, you know. We need um, to be able to explore and be in a space where you don't have to come with expert analysis in hand. And I hope that you know, I'm serious. I mean, there's people who who supposedly think I know something about something like this. I mean, I wrote a part of a book about it one time um uh if you want to get the book you know shameless plug but no seriously i mean to come and and to be challenged or to be invited and um presented with uh something different not necessarily you know better or worse but something different um and then the, as I, I shared with you in the group here i mean I did not expect this to be, and this is a compliment, I did not expect this to be as intellectually as intense as it was. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking, I haven't thought this hard like all day. 
um, in terms of saying like, oh man, um, man, okay, I didn't think about it this way or to hear it, particularly to hear um, it juxtaposed or compared with um, other places, other experiences. I think that's the, that's, the, that's the tremendous gift and challenge, particularly of your generation that I'm a part of in terms of living with uh, in my own life with my own uh, young people, young emerging young adults, but but um, you're going to live this, live into this in a much different way than I am. And sometimes it's very easy, especially now. We have a number of things that are happening in the United States, like right now. <laughs> I'm sure you have things happening um, in your respective um, uh, uh, spaces and places, but it gets real easy to get, you know, kind of get focused in on what's happening just where you are and not realizing that in my language, inequity, um, uh, challenge, um, uh, all these things are not germane just to here, meaning in the U.S., um, and uh, the fight for solidarity or for um, equity and the responsibility of being equitable is a human enterprise and of human uh, as well as cre create a, cre a consequence that impacts creation. And to know that you guys are a part of making it better or working towards making it possible is um, I can go to sleep tonight. I'll be all right. So thank you. Well, I know I speak for all of us when I say just how much I appreciate the kind words and loved having you, love the energy and the perspective that you brought. And we have these all the time. So if you want to come to more, like you are more than welcome. Yeah, I, you know, I don't want to be like coming all of them because then that'd be kind of creepy and it'll, <laughs> no. it'll, get, it'll get it'll get old real fast. But, you know, I do want to kind of have like those Oprah moments yeah. where I come for like some special ones and be like, maybe next time I'll bring bring you some gummy bears and and uh, and we need to do one where we're like actually eating because like you don't know this, but like my thing is tiki masala and curry goat. And I had some uh, Panera some spinach yesterday. I literally just had, you know, uh, all that good stuff. And I had still got some rice left over. Uh, my friend, I still got some rice. We going we got to do some some noodles and stuff. So we got to do a culinary thing. We got to, you know, bring some food and hook it up. You know, y'all got DoorDash in India? <laughs> oh, I guess not. Okay. All right. Well, we'll work on that. We, we'll Uber you something. No, 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 we do, we do. <laughs> we I was do. laughing because like, I'm so hungry right now and it's it's like four o'clock and I haven't had my breakfast. I mean, it's not time for breakfast, but I mean, I haven't slept a wink and then. Oh, you know, I'm telling you. Exactly. Get you some uh, talking about food. Some non, and you get you some, and some uh, pineapple or mango chutney. That's the breakfast of champions for me. That's all I got to say. That's all I no, got to say. Anyway. Just, just out there FYI naan is not very it's not it's easy. not it's, it's not, not easy to make it's not you have to you have to get like a lot of kneading and it's like making pizza dough you don't make pizza dough every day do you I don't make pizza dough at all that's why I told you DoorDash <laughs> I'm telling you they they just break it to you in the US it's like it just show up it's like bam it's like pizza where'd it come from I called it it came out the phone you know so anyway I enjoyed y'all. Gary's already like, I gotta go. We've been on here too long. But no, I love to I love to find another way, another time to participate. And uh, if I could be of any any help and encouragement, let me know. Yeah, just let us know. Uh oh, Gary, did well, you want to Gary, Gary will track me down. He, you know, he know he don't talk on the phone. He just texts you. I, I gotta get used to that. I'll be calling, he'd be like, No, I don't talk on the phone. No, it's the phone is not for talking. The tone, the phone is for texting. The <laughs> phone is for for Facebooking and you know Clubhouse and and all that stuff. So you know you have to send me a carrier pigeon. Or something. We have our own Clubhouse here. You're welcome anytime. Ooh, I will love it. I will love it. You guys be well. Um, all right. Madison, I have a I have a topic suggestion. Okay, what is it? It's okay. One second. 
Yeah, freedom of press. Freedom of the press. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would I be would good. I so want to join that. Oh my god, I have so much to say. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can do that one next week. All right. Okay. Everyone, thanks so much. Talk soon. Be well. Bye. Uh, I'm not going to engage in a reflection about uh, Dialogos because uh, I, I, that's sort of my job and I'm doing it all the time. Instead, I'm going to reflect on what's happened here. Um, I was really impressed and deeply encouraged. So that's what I'll say from my reflection. Yeah, thank you, John. It was a very good conversation. And thank, thank you to all of you. Uh, I really enjoyed this. And John would love to have you on again in the future if you're up for it at some point. Um, but yeah, thank you all for your time. Of course, I'll, I'll come back if you want. <laughs> yeah, great. And you can pick the topic as well. Okay. <laughs> all right. And yeah, thank you all for your time. And I will see you later. Bye. If possible, I just want to say one more thank you to John real quick. Um, mm -hmm. I've been listening to um, Awakening from the Meeting Crisis, episode 50, outside on my lounge chair. <laughs> and um, I popped up a notification that said, like, oh, yeah, John Verbeke, you're streaming live, Gen Z Changemakers. So when I clicked on that, I saw Madison and Shabu speaking, and that's what showed me what Civics Unplugged was. Oh, and The way I learned about Civics Unplugged was through you. So thank you so much. You're welcome. You're really welcome. Glad to hear that. Thanks, everyone. Take good care. Thank Stay you. Soon. Bye.